Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, Battleship staff has been invited to take a tour of Battleship North Carolina, and one of the top things I wanted to investigate while I was here was their cofferdam system. Before we talk about this, let me tell you about today's video sponsor. Rustic and Main makes rings like mine out of reclaimed wood. Mine is made out of the teak wood deck of Battleship New Jersey, but they also have one made out of the wood from Battleship North Carolina. They have a number of other rings made of other reclaimed woods, so be sure to check the link in the description for their website. Ships were never meant to last forever. What we operating museum ships do is fairly unnatural. Uh, and it's a new profession. It's only started uh, relatively recently in the 20th century. So we're still learning a lot of things. For example, early on in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, when the first museum ships were being opened up, uh, particularly the ones down along the Gulf Coast and the southern coast of the United States, it was thought that with the prevalence of hurricanes and the limited number of staff on board, it would be better to sink the ships into the mud to prevent them from being dragged out to sea or swept into their moorings than uh, to let them free float. While there's definitely logic to this argument, uh, when you start operating a ship for a really long time in an environment like this, you get some issues. The part of the ship that corrodes fastest is the wind water line. So that is that uh, black stripe along the edge of U.S. Navy warships, the boot topping, where the water line normally is. And uh, the, the wind is blowing waves against that, so it's constantly getting wet and drying out. If a part of the ship is constantly dry, it'll be preserved for a long time. If a part of the ship is constantly wet, uh, submerged either in water or even mud, uh, it'll be preserved a long time. But if it's consistently getting wet and dry and wet and dry, over the course of decades without significant maintenance work, then you get some major deterioration issues. Ships like Battleship New Jersey have about a two foot wind water line where the waves will fluctuate about two feet uh, along the side of the ship because the ship is floating and sinking with the waves. Ships sunk in the mud like North Carolina have a significantly higher wind water line because they are stationary but whatever the tidal shift here is dictates that. And you can see the uh, kind of red streaked rusty band from the boot topping on down that's uh, about eight feet tall. Uh, so that's more of the hull exposed to corrosion at any given time. Some museum ships have started doing some really unique things to help with this preservation. How do you take a ship sitting in the mud and put her in dry dock? It, it's very difficult. Well, what about Cruiser Olympia that's uh, moored very close to Battleship New Jersey? She's been out of dry dock for so long that uh, there's some concern that her shell plating wouldn't be able to take a voyage to a dry dock or sitting on the keel block. So how do you stabilize a vessel like that? The solution is the coffer dam. There are two types of coffer dams that uh, museum ships are currently using. There's the one like you can see behind me in North Carolina, where you build a structure all the way around the ship, uh, essentially making your own dry dock. And we'll talk more about that in a second. And there's the one like Olympia is using. Free floating in the river, uh, th they can't just build a structure around her, but they can build a small box that you can basically suction cup onto the side of the hull to treat that section of the wind water line. And a number of ships in addition to Olympia are now either doing this or looking into it. Battleship Iowa has a major restoration initiative going on using their coffer dam. And uh, the aircraft carrier Yorktown is also looking at a coffer dam for their hull preservation needs. Uh, the type of movable coffer dam is a great way to stabilize your vessel one section at a time in preparation to going into dry dock it can really extend the life of the hull of the ship. Structure like this is, uh, costs about as much as dry docking a museum ship, depending on the size of your vessel, because uh, there's hundreds of feet of difference in, in the size of some battleships. Uh, it 
might cost about 10 to 20 million dollars to install a structure like that, which is roughly the cost of dry docking. Then you pump out the structure and you can do all of your major work. If you follow uh, museum ships like North Carolina on Facebook or other social medias, you've probably seen them posting about the work that they're doing, uh, which involved cutting away some of the sheeting, which is uh, about 16 millimeters thick, about uh, 0.6 and some change inches thick as designed, the thinnest shell plating on a battleship. Uh, surveys of the hull indicated that about three quarters of that thickness had wasted away. So in places it was only four millimeters thick. And uh, that's not just a problem with North Carolina. Other battleships like uh, Missouri, Iowa, and New Jersey all have thin shell plating in that area that's leading to issues. So Missouri had some holes there that they were able to patch in dry dock back in 2009. And that's the area where Iowa is starting with their cofferdam project. It's also one of the areas that us on New Jersey are monitoring very closely. So it's not at all uncommon for that sort of issue. And uh, the best solution for it is to crop out the wasted steel and replace it with new steel of a like material. And that's exactly what the North Carolina staff have been doing over the past year. And uh, let me tell you, the, the work looks great here. So does this work? Is it an acceptable substitute for dry docking? Is it a good long-term solution for preserving a ship? Well, short answer, yeah, by and large, th there's some drawbacks, but what other solution do you have? NAVC classifies ships like North Carolina that cannot be towed into dry dock as in critical danger, because if they get some leaking, you can't take it anywhere. She is stuck here in the Cape Fear River. So by building a call for dam around the ship, you can perform much of the same maintenance work you would in dry dock. Because ships like this are sunk into the mud, you can't access the entire width of the hull. What you can see here is probably only half of the below water area of the ship. That's fine. By and large, the stuff permanently submerged in the mud is not going to deteriorate quickly. And worse comes to worse. You can see they have a front end loader here. You can dig out that mud and do work. So really the only issue is the under side of the hull of the ship. How do you get down there? Well, honestly, this isn't something that's come up particularly often. Uh, Battleship Texas had some serious corrosion in their bilges, and they were able to go in from the inside and do a tremendous amount of work rebuilding the interior framing and plating uh, on the underside of the ship. They, they even jacked up boilers and engines and steering gear and things like that to get critical parts. Uh, ships like this do have a multi-bottom system that is uh, the triple bottom of North Carolina. There's about three feet in each of the two layers. I think it's two and three quarters in the top layer and three feet even in the bottom layer. So not a lot of room to work if you go at it from the inside, but theoretically possible. You can also dig uh, under select portions of the ship. Uh, Battleship Alabama was picked up from the mud she was sitting in during a severe hurricane a couple of years ago and sat back down in the mud on an angle. So they built a coffer dam around her, or she may have already had a coffer dam around her, but they were able to drain that structure and then dig it out so that the ship went back to level. So you can dig under a ship like this to access select areas. Um, and, and maybe the best thing to do long term would be to dig away all of the mud and section by section place traditional dry dock style keel blocks under the vessel so that you can access all of her. Uh, that, that's maybe something to consider decades down the line, but uh, right now this is the latest and greatest thing in historic ship preservation and this sort of system should last decades before there's any major issues. Those of you who've watched the channel before uh, know that I don't like ships sitting in mud because when a ship is sitting in water gravity pushes down and water pushes in in all directions hydrostatic pressure 
But when a ship is sitting on ground, gravity pushes down and gravity pushes back up from the ground, but nothing's pushing in the sides, even if mud, concrete, whatever is built up around it. So over time, even a ship as structurally sound as a battleship is going to start to pancake down and the sides will bulge out. Ships like Victory and the Japanese battleship Mikasa have seen issues like these. Uh, so it is just a matter of time before that happens. Other ships like uh, some of the ships in Great Britain, like Cuddy Sark, have managed to put their ships in graving docks, uh, Victory 2, uh, where they have posts pushing in on the side in addition to underneath to simulate the pressure of water. And this seems to be working long term. So I would say that that is a great next stage for a project like this, maybe 40 or 50 years down the line when the ship really starts to become superannuated and you see uh, some of that bulging issue, they can probably adopt this system into something like that. So would we ever consider doing something like this for New Jersey? Well, North Carolina is really in an ideal position for this. The Cape Fear River down at the uh, fantail end of the ship runs across the back of the ship. So this channel that she's pulled up into really keeps her out of the shipping lane. So building a coffer dam like this does not interfere with any of the riverine travel going on. Jersey is moored parallel to the river, not perpendicular to it. So I'm not entirely sure if we could build a structure like this without impeding on the shipping channel. I believe the Delaware is wide enough where we are to do this. And uh, this is absolutely something that we should consider. It's not going to happen this time when we dry dock New Jersey. New Jersey is overdue for dry docking. And the time it would take to plan and construct something like this would preclude us from doing it in the next couple of years. What I would do is dry dock her now sometime in the 2020s and then start looking at building a structure like this by the 2030s or 40s. That'll also give us time to see just how well this works for ships like North Carolina and Alabama. And I've got no reason to suspect it wouldn't work out well. So definitely something that we are considering. Uh, and again, that, that's the whole reason why I'm making the trip down here was to see this structure and the restoration work that they're doing. What are some other positives and negatives of keeping a ship in a coffer dam like this? I really like that it allows you to see the underwater hull body of the ship. Let us know in the comment section down below some other things we haven't thought of. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. And for this video, we were sponsored by Rustic and Maine. Rustic and Maine makes rings like this one out of reclaimed wood. This is a unique ring that is extremely personalized to me. It's built out of a gold band, teak from Battleship New Jersey, and oak from the inside of a whiskey barrel. So it's a very cool ring that uh, stands out among all of my peers. I, I really love it. And uh, if you're interested in something like this, or one made out of other types of wood, such as teak wood from Battleship North Carolina, or other uh, reclaimed wood, there's a link in the description you can check that out. There's also a link in the description to Battleship North Carolina's uh, various social media pages and whatnot. The work that they're doing here is limited by the number of donations they get. So they're only able to patch the bow right now. If they get more donations, they can keep going down the hull of the ship. Otherwise, they've got to save it for a future season. Any support you can give is appreciated. Thanks for watching.